welcome to special edition Jimmy's World. We're going back in time to 1945-ish. We're in a B-17, it's got guns pointed out everywhere on this thing. Four big old engines, two gigantic tires. They've got like Star Wars things down there and more up front and, and we get to crawl through it and you get to ride along in this. Let's go. The B-17 was known as the Flying Fortress. Why would it be called a Flying Fortress? Because it's got flipping guns everywhere on this thing. We're talking 13 fully automatic 50 cal Browning machine guns in nine different places. There was two up front, what they call the chin turret, down kind of on the bottom up there, and then they had two on the nose cheeks on either side, and two staggered waist guns out near the middle, two in the upper Sperry turret on top there, and then you had two in that ball turret, you know, Star Wars crazy flipping thing down at the bottom, and then they had two pointed out backwards, and they even had one that could go straight up out of the radio compartment behind the bomb bay. And speaking of that bomb bay, yeah, they had this thing open while we were flying it. That four inch little walkway gantry catwalk thing there, seriously sketchy. Those guns down there, we think, are operated by this thing right here. Flip that, pull it over, and -na 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 -na, I'll take out all the bad guys. This, this thing's just got guns everywhere. Everything about this airplane is gigantosaurus huge. It's just massive. It takes 10 people to operate everything on this. Your pilot and co-pilot, okay, that's easy. Your navigator, then your bombardier up front, which is also the nose gunner. Then you had your flight engineer and your top turret gunner, your radio operator, your waste gunners, and then there's the tail gunner and my favorite, probably, I don't know how this guy lost a bet so bad, the ball turret gunner. He had to be shoved into that thing. Now they said that in flight, they would have a hatch that he could get in and then get down in there, but it would take a really long time. So during battles and things, whenever it was really going crazy, he would just get stuck down in that thing. And that's where he lived until they came all the way back. So it's just, oof, I do not ever want to be that dude. Now this exact B-17 that we're flying on is a G model, golf model, and it was uh, finished after the war had ended, so it did not see any actual wartime stuff. However, this was one of 16 flying fortresses that were transferred to the US Coast Guard where they were redesigned as PB-1G the patrol Boeing 1G is for Coast Guard. They took away all the flashbangs and all the cool stuff and they replaced them with radars so they could use them for air and sea rescue, iceberg patrol, and you know, they might have to go looking for some of that, uh, uh, that Colombian bam bam. They even carried a 27 foot 3,000 pound air droppable wooden lifeboat under it. How insane is that? And then in 1959, they sold it for a whopping $5,997.93 to a company out of Mesa, Arizona that used it to fight fires and crop dusting. It was also one of five B-17s that was in the film Tora Tora Tora. Another fantastic airplane movie. Then in 1985, Globe Air auctioned it off and the Yankee Air Museum purchased it for a cool $250,000. As soon as they got it, they began to go through it. Every nut, bolt, rivet, and screw was being restored back to the way it was originally designed to be. They took all four engines off and rebuilt them all. The ball turret and the chin turret 
they had to go find those. They, they found them. They restored those to new condition and they put those on there the way they're supposed to be. And that top turret dome and the cheat guns were fitted back to the nose where they belong. This airplane has a length of 74 and a half feet long but that wingspan is over a hundred feet. 103 foot nine inches wingspan. It's huge. It's almost 20 feet tall and it weighs in empty without anything at over 36,000 pounds. When you put all the little uh, party gifts in there and all the, the, the flash bangs and all the people and the petrol, the, you know, the make it go juice, this thing will take off at 65 1,500 pounds. That's just nuts. And those engines, 1,200 horsepower each. That is a lot of BTUs coming out of that thing. Just everything about this is mammoth, just gigantic. Except the rate of climb, 900 feet a minute. Yeah, it's because everything else is huge but it'll just keep on climbing all the way to 35,000 feet which is the same altitude that airliners fly at that's nuts probably the most famous b-17 flying fortress was the one and only memphis bell famous enough to where they made an awesome movie out of it highly recommend it great movie and you can see that airplane is completely restored in the National Museum of the Air Force at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio. Put in the comments if you've ever been there. I've been there. It was awesome. Here's some fun, notable B-17s. The All-American was the infamous one of the picture where the tail is pretty much shot completely through, yet it's still flying somehow. And it made it all the way back with not one single injury to the crew. How nuts is that? Here's a fantastic one. There was one called the Mary Ann. And in December 6, 1941, it left en route to Hickam Field in Hawaii. And you may wonder, hmm, that date sounds familiar. Because it was the attack on Pearl Harbor on the 7th of December. And this thing was in the air flying when it all just hit the fan and instead of landing and going on to be you know armored and all that kind of stuff they just said load them up and go get them boys a fun fact from the bad guy point of view the luftwaffe discovered that it took on average 20 hits with a 20 millimeter shell to bring one of these airplanes down and then pilots of normal ability only hit the bombers on 2% of all the shots they took. So in order to get 20 hits, they had to fire a thousand rounds at these bombers. And most of these German fighters were only equipped with two 20 millimeter cannons and only carried 500 rounds. That meant that there had to be two fighters hitting and firing all of their bullets at one airplane to bring one of them down. That's pretty good odds. The latest information I can find is that there are only nine airworthy B-17s known to exist. And we got to fly in this one. The first flight of the model 299, which later became the B-17, was in July 28th of 1935. Think about that for a minute. That was almost a hundred years ago. The B-17 Yankee Lady was almost entirely completed by volunteers. And it took its first post-restoration flight on July 13th, 1995. And the Yankee Lady has been flying ever since. What a blessing and an honor to be able to join the crew and experience this fantastic airplane at the greatest air show on the planet. I went ahead and put a link in the description below so if you want to ride on this thing, you can just click on their link and go to it. It is a truly a remarkable once in a lifetime opportunity. 
that I would highly recommend to anyone. This is just cool. It's huge, it's got history, it makes big airplane noises, has flipping guns everywhere. Like, this is just, that's America. Bet you never had a perspective like that landing in an airplane. What?